All right guys, so this is gonna be a quick video about my eGPU setup using the Dell XPS 9300 13-inch laptop. Now, if you haven't checked out my review on it, it's in the links below, but basically this laptop has the i7 1065G7 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, and the gorgeous 16 by 10 aspect ratio 4K touch display. I touched that on, I touch upon this on the video, but I still have some minor gripes with the laptop itself, so do check that out. Now, my eGPU setup is the HP Omen Accelerator eGPU box, so that has the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte graphics card, uh, one terabyte SSD, uh, and I bought that Mm, probably about four years ago. And the reason why I had bought it at the time was because I was at uni. So I was using actually a previous Dell XPS laptop and I needed it for portability, but I also wanted to do some light gaming on the side. And it so happened that this eGPU was on sale and I bought it for quite cheap. I think I remember it was 400 Australian dollars or something with the um, GPU as well as the hard drive inbuilt. I still find it useful being able to switch from a desk setup where I have my laptop here a monitor here and a cable which I just plug in to connect it up to the eGPU and then unplugging it whenever I needed to go out or something and I wanted to bring my laptop with me. Um, but there are a few minor issues that I have using this with the HP Omen Accelerator box. Now, this may differ depending on what your eGPU setup is like and what kind of laptop you're using, but I thought I might as well make a video for you guys if you're looking at maybe incorporating a GPU setup with this new Dell XPS laptop. Firstly, the cable that's included with the eGPU is incredibly short, and I think this is something that is inherent in a lot of eGPUs. The manufacturers usually include maybe a 30 centimeter cable, and it just is not practical for a proper desk setup. So I went to Amazon and I bought a third party two meter Thunderbolt cable that worked perfectly for the desk setup that I had intended it for. Um, it was expensive, but I would suggest if you're gonna get an eGPU, factor in the fact that you might have to buy a longer cable. Now, the eGPU itself has connectivity uh, at the back of it. Um, one of which is, of course, the Thunderbolt port. Uh, it also includes a USB-C port, four USB-A ports, an Ethernet port, and of course, all the display out ports from the graphics card. So I use the uh, display port out and I've connected it to my external display, which is the crossover 27 inch QHD display. Now this was a very old monitor that I had bought off eBay from South Korea. It's basically a rebranded subpar Apple QHD panel. Um, and I haven't upgraded it since buying it back in my first year of university. Uh, I probably should upgrade it, but it's what I have at the moment. Now, the Thunderbolt cable itself has its limitations because it essentially has to move data from the hard drive within the eGPU to the XPS laptop. I have connected a wireless dongle to one of the USB port, USB A ports to the back of the eGPU, so it has to host the data and transfer that to the XPS laptop as well all of which includes the graphics kind of handover from the card to the laptop, the laptop out towards the display. Because of all that, um, it leads to subpar and unreliable connections if you're going to use multiple USB-A ports, the USB-C port. Um, for example, I tried to connect my USB speakers to one of those extra USB-A ports, including one that was taken up by the wireless dongle, and my speakers would just crackle like crazy, uh, and it was very irritating, I had to remove it. So all those kind of things you have to take into account if you're gonna use an eGPU, knowing that there's gonna be some limitations with the connectivity. Okay, so moving on from connectivity, I wanted to talk about how I ended up getting the eGPU to work with the XPS laptop. Now, HP provides a suite of different drivers, as well as the HP Omen Accelerator app, and supposedly, by installing all of those, you can get a seamless experience where plugging in the eGPU would automatically switch from the integrated graphics card to the GTX 1060 graphics card. Of course, it never really worked, that, worked out that way. Uh, that might vary between manufacturer to manufacturer, but what I found with HP laptops, I mean, sorry, HP 
eGPUs with my XPS laptop is that I needed to uninstall all the programs that they suggested, install the official Thunderbolt driver, the latest one, and then plugging in the eGPU, wait for the USB connectivity sound that you always hear when you plug in a device. After that, go into device manager, find the eGPU that's there and enable it. Once having enabled it, I would then install the latest NVIDIA graphics card driver for it. And voila, Bob's your uncle, it will work. Obviously this isn't as convenient as plugging in the eGPU and have it automatically switch from the integrated graphics card to the GTX 1060, but it was the second best option and it was reliable. So I didn't bother trying to find another workaround for it. So in terms of the desktop setup itself, there are three main display output setups that you can use. The first is that you can output the video from the eGPU to the inbuilt display itself. The second option is of course outputting it to the external display. And then the third to both. Now I opted to just output video to the external display. And the reason for it is that you're getting the most performance when you're using the eGPU with solely the external display as you're not sending video back through the Thunderbolt cable that is already under so much strain. Um, it's basically like having a one-way highway instead of a two-way highway. Let's move on to talking about how it performs. Now, the TLDR is that you get a great increase in your graphical performance, but not the same amount that you would expect from a desktop performing GPU. So using 3D Mark as a baseline test, I found that I was getting about a five times performance boost in raw numbers when using the GTX 1060 compared to the Intel Iris Plus graphics. Similarly, using Geekbench, I was getting about 10K on the Iris Plus graphics, which is pretty good for onboard integrated graphics card. But then with the GTX 1060, I was getting about three times that. Now, in terms of gaming, I noticed an equally substantial increase in performance, often with the ability to also increase the resolution and the graphics quality. So starting with Fortnite, on the inbuilt Iris Plus graphics, I was getting about 65 frames per second using the lowest settings at full HD plus resolution. And I would also encounter the occasional frame rate drops here and there. Whereas when I was using the eGPU, I was getting about 55 frames per second on ultra settings at QHD resolution. So that's a substantial increase from that of the inbuilt graphics card. Similarly, when playing Octopath Traveler, um, in the inbuilt graphics card that I was using, I was getting about 35 frames per second, and that was with the lowest graphics settings at full HD plus resolutions. Um, using the GTX 1060 though, I was able to get the highest settings at QHD resolution with frame rates of around 60 frames per second. Now, the next two games were tested solely using the eGPU, and that was Witcher 3, which performed pretty well. Um, I was using it, I was playing it at 1080p resolution on medium settings, and I was getting a solid 65 frames per second with barely any dips below that. Um, the other game that I solely tested on the eGPU was GTA 5, and uh, the, this one performed the best out of all the games. I was getting um, over 100 frames per second using the highest graphic settings at QHD resolutions once again. Now, during all the above, I found CPU temps to be well controlled at around 70 degrees with very few temporary spikes up to 90 degrees. Additionally, the fan noise never became annoying for either laptop or eGPU. All right, to quickly wrap up this video, eGPUs are great if you're looking for an experience where you want to use a single device at Ultra Portable, for example, for work and uni, but also want to use that device for some light gaming back at home or a more graphically intense program. The downsides, of course, is that you're not getting as much performance out of the eGPU as you were, would from a desktop setup using that same GPU processor. Um, in addition, you probably need to work around a couple of the compatibility issues between the eGPU, your device, and your desktop setup. Thirdly, the eGPU, to get the most out of it, you will probably need an external display. And by that point in time, it might be worth considering actually getting a desktop to pair with that external display. Particularly if you're like me, who doesn't really use their laptop much for work or for uni and can 
probably be able to manage between two different devices in the home setting. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit rough because I didn't really have a script and I was kind of winging it, but I hope to make more videos to come. Um, the next one will probably be about the XPS laptop versus the MacBook Pro 13. Um, so if you're looking forward to watching that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, make some comments below and I'll get to back to you guys soon. Thanks.